What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSaurus and welcome to the build guide of IceCube, the $600 mini ITX gaming PC that I built for the month of June. If you guys somehow missed the gaming benchmarks video that I did for IceCube, I'll go ahead and drop a link to it down below. But in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys step by step on how you can build this exact same PC and also show you how you can install Windows on it as well. So without wasting any more time, let's begin. All right, so all you need to build this PC is a screwdriver and the parts itself, which will be linked below. And I'm also gonna be adding links to optional parts like an SSD, a better graphics card, and even a CPU cooler, depending on how much you have to spend. You can also pick up an anti-static mod mat if you want to be extra cautious, but I always build on top of my desk without any problems. So go ahead and remove the two side panels from the case and the clear side panel from the top. There should be two screws holding up each piece. Then we're going to install the CPU and RAM sticks. So pull out the manual, IO shield, and the SATA cables that comes in the box and take out the motherboard from the anti-static bag and place the board on top of the box. We're going to be installing the CPU next. So take out the processor and the heatsink from the box. And we're gonna be matching the gold triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the socket cover to make sure that the processor is installed in the correct orientation. Pop up on the cover by pressing down on the lever and gently place the CPU down. Make sure not to touch the surface of the CPU or force it down since you can damage the pins easily. If it's fully seated, both of the notches should sit flush on each side. Go ahead and gently lower the flap and tighten it using the lever once again. The black cover should pop right off so don't freak out. Next we're going to install the heatsink. You don't need to apply any thermal paste since it already comes pre-applied with some. Position the heatsink in the orientation you want, just make sure the wire is in reach with the CPU fan header on the motherboard. As you can see, the Intel logo is upside down if I were to install it this way. Now, although you can install it this way without any problems, my OCD simply can't allow this. So I went ahead and removed the wires and rotated the heatsink so that the logo was upright. Once you figure out how you're going to install the cooler, you need to align the four pins on the heatsink to the four holes on the motherboard. Gently lower the heatsink down while aligning the four pins with the four holes on the motherboard. And once they fall into place, go ahead and push down on each of the four pins until you hear it snap in place. Before we continue, make sure that they are fully seated and you can do that by grabbing the heatsink and pulling up slightly. Finally, connect the fan cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard, which should be located right next to it. Now we are ready to install the RAM sticks. So go ahead and pull down the tabs on the RAM slots and align the gaps on the RAM sticks with the notches on the RAM slots and snap them in place by applying pressure in the center. Do the exact same thing on the other RAM stick. Now it's time to install the IO shield. So make sure the three circle cutouts are on the bottom and apply pressure on all four corners until it snaps in place. If everything is done correctly, it should sit flush with the case. Grab the motherboard and gently lower it down in the case while aligning the four holes with the motherboard to the four holes on the case. You will then need four of these round headed screws which came with the case. You might need to push the motherboard to the side a little bit in order to align the holes as you tighten the screws. Now it's time to hook up the power supply, so go ahead and flip the case over and remove the bottom panel. With the fan facing downwards, align the holes together and screw them in while holding the power supply with your other hand. You will need four of the hexagon shaped screws for this. Let's install the storage next. So go ahead and remove the dump screws located on the drive bays. If you have two storage units, remove both of the screws and drive bays. If you're installing a hard drive, you will need four rubber grommets and four of these long screws. Insert the grommet halfway through the large hole on the drive bay and then slide it down so that it sits nice and snug on the smaller hole. Repeat the same process for the other three holes. Grab the hard drive and place it flat on the tray with the sticker facing outwards and facing upright. Align the holes on the tray with the holes on the hard drive and screw them in one by one. If installing an SSD, the concept is similar, but instead of using the rubber grommets, you're gonna be using these four round screws. Make sure all four of the holes are aligned and screw them in with the SSD sticker facing outwards. Once that's done, go ahead and snap both of the trays back inside the case and go ahead and screw them in. Before you work on cable management, we need to connect all the cables so that you know where everything goes, making the wire management a lot easier later on. So now it's time to connect the front panel cables. Grab the USB 3.0 wire that has the blue tip and connect it to the USB 3.0 header on the motherboard, which should be right next to the RAM sticks. 
Next up is the HD audio cable and this one connects to the left side of the motherboard right behind the IO shield. The black fan cable connects to the chassis fan header right below the CPU heatsink and finally we have these annoying little cables. Let's start off by connecting the HDD LED. Flip the cable so that the words are facing downwards and connect it to the bottom left two pins. Next up is the reset switch. It doesn't really matter which way you face this, but make sure you connect it right next to the HDD LED. Now we're going to do the power LEDs. So let's start off with the positive cable that has the plus sign and we can hook that up to the top left and then we can connect the negative one right next to that. Finally, we have the power switch and once again, the orientation doesn't matter as long as you connect it next to the power LEDs. So if you did everything correctly, this is what it should look like from the left side and this is what it looks like on the opposite side. Now we're going to connect the SATA cables to your hard drive or SSD. So if you're using two drives, make sure to connect both of the SATA cables to each one. The other end of the SATA cable connects to the motherboard SATA ports, which are colored gray. Now we need to give power to the drives. So grab the cable that looks like this coming from the power supply and hook up one end to the hard drive and the other end to the second drive, whether it's another hard drive or an SSD. If you're only using one hard drive or SSD, then you only need to connect one of these. We're going to need to power the CPU, so grab the two 4-pin connectors labeled CPU and connect only one of them to the 4-pin socket on the motherboard near the top left, right next to the heatsink. And finally, grab the 24-pin ATX cable and hook it up to the socket right next to the RAM slots. Make sure the hook is fully seated. If there are any gaps, your PC will have problems turning on and may damage the motherboard. Make sure you're applying plenty of pressure and snap it in place. This is what it's supposed to look like. The same goes for the CPU cables we just installed. So once all the cables are plugged in, this is what your PC should look like. Now that you know where everything plugs into, take this time to do some cable management. Feel free to disconnect all the cables and route them in any way you like for a much cleaner look. Using the bottom half of the PC to hide majority of the unused cables is a great idea, especially since you can't see any of it once the side panel is on. Make sure to use plenty of velcro straps to tie the cables together, and I even flipped my SSD downwards to hide those two cables coming out from it. Now it's time to install the graphics card. Remove the white plastic piece in the back to gain access to the PCI bracket screws and remove both of the brackets. Slide in the graphics card until you hear it snap in place and afterwards install the screws back on. And then next you will need to hook up both PCI cables to power the graphics card. Finish putting back all four of the panels and you are done. So congratulations for building yourself a badass mini ITX gaming PC. Now it's time to install the operating system and the drivers. You will need a USB flash drive with at least 8GB of space and a CD key for Windows 8.1 or Windows 10 depending on which OS you are going with. Instead of paying full price for Windows, you guys can pick them up for super cheap on the Reddit CD key swapper which is where I get all of my CD keys. I personally use Sean but you can buy it from anyone you want. Windows 10 goes for about 35 bucks and Windows 8.1 Pro goes for around 25 which is still a lot better than paying full price. So once you have your CD key and USB drive, it's time to install the files on the USB. You need to visit the Microsoft website and download the media tool. Now there's one for Windows 8.1 and there's one for Windows 10, but I'll go to leave a link to both of them down below. So depending on which OS you're installing, make sure you click on the correct link and download the correct media tool. Once you download the file, open it up and run it. Next, you need to select the language, edition, and architecture. Once everything is correct on the screen, hit next and it will ask you where you want to save the file. Obviously, we're going to install the file on our USB, so select the USB flash drive option and hit next again. Over here, you need to select the correct drive of your USB. Once you select that, hit next again and a message will pop up telling you that the files will be deleted, so make sure you have nothing important in there before proceeding. It will then download and install the files. The process usually takes anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes depending on your internet speeds, so sit tight and wait for the download to finish. Once it's done, you will get a message stating that the USB flash drive is ready. Go ahead and pull out the USB drive and plug it into Ice Cube and turn it on. As soon as you hit the power button, keep hitting the delete key on your keyboard until it takes you into the BIOS. Once you are here, navigate to the boot menu and select hard drive BBS priorities and make sure that all of your hard drives are showing up here. Since I have both a hard drive and an SSD, both of my drives are showing up. 
Now, if you're using both an SSD and a hard drive like me, then make sure that your boot option number one is your SSD, since that is where we're going to be installing the Windows operating system. If you only have one drive, then the boot option doesn't matter since it will automatically boot from it. Go ahead and hit F10 to save your changes and it will restart again and take you to the Windows installation screen. If it doesn't take you to the Windows screen, that means that it's having trouble booting from your USB drive. So go ahead and try the USB drive by plugging it in the back of your PC instead. If that still doesn't work, then you connected something wrong on the motherboard. So go back and watch the cable installation part to make sure you didn't miss anything. So once you're at the product activation screen, type in your CD key and hit next until you get to the Windows setup screen. Make sure you select the custom option and it will display all of the drives connected to your PC. If you have more than one, then make sure to select the SSD drive since that is where Windows will be installed on. So let Windows do its thing until all the files are installed. This is really important. Once you get this message stating that Windows is restarting, you need to quickly remove the USB flash drive from your PC so that it doesn't boot from it again. Once it restarts, it will continue setting up Windows for you, so just follow all the steps until you reach the desktop. Once you're on the main screen, open up your PC and make sure that both of your drives are visible. As you can see here, we have Windows installed on my SSD and a 500GB hard drive is also showing up. If you want to access Wi-Fi, you can buy this tiny wireless adapter that costs only 10 bucks. Simply plugging this into your USB port gives you access to the internet up to 150 megabits per second and I'll drop a link down below if anyone is interested. Now it's time to install the drivers. I'll leave links to all of these websites down below so it's easier for you guys to find them. So once you're at the Azeroc website, select the download option for the motherboard drivers and select the operating system that you're running. You don't have to download all of these, but I do recommend it to ensure your PC doesn't run into future problems. So go ahead and download the Realtek audio driver, Intel engine driver, and the LAN driver. Then we're gonna head on over to the AMD driver website and download the auto detect software, which will keep your drivers up to date. Once all of those are installed and ready to go, do a fresh restart of your system and you are done. If you guys decide to build this exact same PC, make sure to send me pictures on Twitter with the hashtag IceCube, that way I can share it with the world. So that is it for the build guide. If these videos help you guys out a lot, make sure to leave a like to show your support and I can continue doing these for every single one of my budget builds. That's basically it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.